All right, y'all, we're about to start. Um, you see these banners on the ground? We're gonna make a circle around this and we're gonna have all the banners up. We want people to see these messages. We want people to read Globalize the Intifada. We want people to read We Will Free Palestine Within Our Lifetime. Honor the martyrs of Palestine. We're gonna ask them to come closer and then we're gonna educate them about Palestine. Oh, no, no, it's not. Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Father of all who 
as you can see their names are Zakaria Lizbedi, Mahmoud, Arda, Yaqub, Qadri, Muhammad, Arda, Munadir, Infi'ad, and Ayham Kamamji. These six prisoners escaped and enjoyed a couple of days of freedom outside of the Zionist cells. When why were they in there for the first place? Well, like many and most Palestinian prisoners, many of these prisoners were not even charged with anything, let alone being found guilty, let alone being given a fair trial. They didn't even charge them with anything. Because in Israel, they have something called administrative detention, where they can just say that they're going to imprison you for six months, periods at a time that they can renew indefinitely. So they can imprison you for six months, and then another six, and then another six, and then another six. And for some people, they've been doing this for over 10 years. And with this imprisonment, they don't even have to tell you why you're in prison. They don't even have to charge you. You don't even know what you're accused of or why you're there in the first place. So a lot of these prisoners are already subjected to that. And then other prisoners are given life sentences for daring to have the audacity to protect their family, to protect their land, to protect their homes from being demolished. Because resistance and because standing up for Palestinian freedom, standing up for yourself as a Palestinian is illegal. So of course, they had no other choice but to defy the Zionist entity and break free from the prison systems. Just like we hope all Palestinian prisoners will. And just like we hope the prisoners of this country too will also. And that's why we have that banner. The prisons revolt from Attica to Gilboa, 1971 and 2021. This internationalism is not a coincidence. We've been putting up the banner and the call to globalize the Antifada all summer. And who would have thought that a prison rebellion, a prison escape, would happen around the same time? 50 years later, from Palestine to here. And in the past, they used to say, from Attica to Ashkelon, because there have been many prisoners revolts in Palestine before. And it has been said that the Attica prison rebellion here in New York inspired the prison rebellion in Ashkelon, a Zionist detention center, where Palestinians were inspired by the, by the prisoners, the revolutionaries in this country, fighting for their rights, fighting to be free, and did the same thing. 50 years ago, the Attica prison uprising broke out in New York on September 9, 1971, when a group of incarcerated freedom fighters and revolutionaries seized control of the prison to demand better conditions and protest the murder of George Jackson just weeks earlier. George Jackson was, of course, a member of the, was a, a leader of the Black Panther Party a communist revolutionary, a political prisoner who was shot and killed by prison guards at San Quentin in California. When he was 18, he was accused of stealing $70 and sentenced to one year, from one year to life. He spent the rest of his life behind bars. He became politicized on the inside through his studies and by joining the BPP. While he remained incarcerated in California for the last 11 years of his life, he traveled the world through his study of language. He studied Arabic, Chinese, Swahili, and third world history and revolutionary theory. In the aftermath of his death, the San Quentin prison authority searched his cell and inventoried every item, including his personal library, which had 99 books. One of those books was called Enemy of the Sun, the poetry of Palestinian resistance. And it is his death, it is his murder that sparked the riot in the Attica prison in New York. And that rebellion, that riot, sparked the riot in a rebellion in the Ashkelon prison where the Palestinian prisoners were doing the same thing. Four days after 
September 9th, on the 13th, the uprising came to a violent end when state police and prison guards launched a premeditated genocidal attack on the freedom fighters inside. And within 15 minutes, 43 people were killed in cold blood in a hail of indiscriminate gunfire, including 32 prisoners. In a newspaper from Tel Aviv, and we have, we're gonna post this on Instagram later, we have, uh, we have a photo of the original copy. It said, from Attica to Ashkelon. The way they reported on it, you know, talking about how Palestinian prisoners were terrorists, talking about how the, the prisoners here were terrorists, of course we're gonna disregard that. We know that we're not terrorists, we know that we're freedom fighters, and they label freedom fighters terrorists to prevent people from joining those struggles. But they made those connections and they saw them 50 years ago. They said 480 Arab terrorists, half of them sentenced to life imprisonment, rioted for two hours at the top security prison at Ashkelon before wardens restored order. It said at the end, prison commissioner Arya Nir said that the action might have been sparked by the riot at Attica prison in upstate New York. And the, and the Arab prisoners receive daily newspapers and listen to five radio newscasts each day. So we know that these Palestinian prisoners were watching and they were inspired by what's going on here. The struggles of the people are united. Whether or not we put out the call to globalize the Intifada, our ancestors, these freedom fighters and revolutionaries have been doing this long before we have. And that is why we must be unequivocal in our support. When we say that Palestinians should be free, that also means Palestinians in jail. And that means every single one, no matter what, every single Palestinian is a political prisoner because they are in a system where they are vilified for their identity. And that is not different from what we see here in the United States. Every prisoner here is also a political prisoner because we are in a political system that vilifies people for being indigenous, for being black, for being revolutionary, for being anti-capitalist, for being against oppression. So when we say globalize the intifada, that also means the prison walls. From Attica to Gilboa, from Attica to Ashkelon, and wherever prison rebellions may be, we know that the prisoners are the vanguard of the movement, paying the ultimate sacrifice with their lives to fight for our freedom. And so I want you all to look at the posters of these prisoners, of the ones that are being held. Mahmoud Arda, he's over here, but somebody else might also have his poster, if you can hold it up right here. 45 years old from Janine. He escaped from the Galboa prison on September 6th in one of the most heroic prison breaks in history, humiliating the Zionist entity, evading occupation for four days before being arrested. Yaqub Qadri, also one of the six. Muhammad Arda over here and there, also one of the six. Munadir and Fayyad, his photo is right here and over there, also one of the six. And Ayham Kamanji. But then we also have Kayyid and Fasfus, whose photo I think is right here. He's 36 years old from Dura. He's been on hunger strike for 59 days, so for two months he hasn't eaten in protest of his administrative detention. And if you remember what I said at the beginning, that means he's being held without charge, without a trial. He hasn't even been charged with anything. Mekdad Kawasman, his photo is right here, 24 years old, from Al Khalil, on hunger strike for 53 days. Also, an administrative attention, being held without charge or trial. Ala Al Araj, his photo is right there, 34 years old, from Tul Karim. He's been on hunger strike for 35 days. Also because he's been held through administrative detention. 
Hisham Abu Hawas, 39 years old from Durra. Somebody might be holding his photo. We post all of these online as well, so you'll be able to see them later. But he's been on hunger strike for 27 days. Also, due to administrative detention without charge or trial. Ra'ek Bisharat, his photo is right here, 44 years old. He's been on hunger strike for 22 days, being held without charge or trial. Shadi Abu Akim, the first photo right here, 37 years old from Bethlehem, on hunger strike for 18 days in protest, being held without charge and without trial. These are just a few of the names. There are close to 4,700 Palestinian prisoners who, some of them, they don't even care to give a charge or trial, most of them actually. But then even the ones who are charged with something, even the ones who are given a trial, we know it's not a fair trial. Palestinians are not tried in civilian court. They are tried in military court. And that 99% of, of cases in Israeli military court against Palestinians end up with a guilty conviction. 99% of people, Palestinians, in this Israeli court are found guilty. So you know what, they're not even gonna bother. They're not even gonna, uh, they're not even gonna pretend that they're charging us with anything and pretend to find us guilty. They'll just say, hey, we'll take you, we'll kidnap you from your home, we'll throw you in prison, we'll torture you, we'll starve you, we'll let you starve, and we're not even gonna make up a reason. We're not even gonna make up an excuse to do this because the world doesn't care, because Israel gets to do what it wants. It gets to kill Palestinians all the time. It gets to kill 67 Palestinian babies, and the most Palestinians get is the New York Times, you know, acknowledging this happened but not saying it's wrong. It's people pretending to feel sorry when 67 Palestinian babies die at once, but every single day, how many Palestinian babies, how many Palestinian children, women, men, and we don't just feel sorry for the babies. We are enraged every single time any Palestinian is killed because they are being killed to establish a Zionist entity that has no right to exist in the first place. When they're killed now, nobody talks about them. That's the most we get, is some momentary attention that doesn't result in actual change, that doesn't result in condemnation from the mainstream media, from all of these institutions of the Zionist entity. But we don't need that, because we have the people listening. We have the people who know the truth. These governments, these universities, they may not be on our side, but we have the people on our side, the people of the world. And right here, as people in the belly of the beast, where they teach you to do anything but support Palestine, to do anything but support black liberation, to do anything but say that you want to abolish the settler state. We are resisting this simply by being here, by standing together, by showing people in Palestine that they are not alone. That we will not let being in the belly of the beast distract us from the truth of what's happening. And that we will not allow our privilege to distract us from fighting for people who are locked up behind bars, who can't come out and protest because they're locked up. Whether it be here in the US or whether it be in Palestine. They paid the ultimate sacrifice by giving up their lives, by being locked up. The least we can do is continue that struggle forward. It's to keep the attention on them, to keep all eyes on them, and to keep chanting for Palestinians and for all prisoners, for the freedom of all prisoners, for the abolition of all prisons, for the abolition of all settler states from Turtle Island to Palestine. And keep that in mind, building up to the 17th. This is not the first or last protest. I see so many familiar faces. We've been going at it all summer. And next week is the culmination. So bring your friends, bring your family, post about it every single day, because we're gonna uplift 
The call to free all Palestinian prisoners. We're also going to uplift the call to shut down settler Zionist organizations in New York City. We're going to uplift the call. We're going to uplift the call to globalize the Intifada from Attica to, Gal to Gilboa. And we're not going to stop. So we really encourage you to keep educating about the 17th, to all come out. Today is just a way for us to get more knowledge and training leading up to that day. And again, we encourage autonomous action. Some of y'all may have seen on our page, somebody hit up a, a, a billboard and an LIC and graffiti globalized the Intifada on it. Our stickers are all over Williamsburg, all over street signs, all over mailboxes. We want this message to spread everywhere, as far and as wide as possible. So keep uplifting the hashtag, the message, globalize the Intifada and come through. We're going to take to the streets today because we want people to see what's happening in Palestine. We're not just going to stay in the park. So today is also going to be a training for marching and for taking the streets on the 17th. Marching without a permit. I know everyone's been marching, but it's important to say it. People take on different levels of risk. You know you risk. Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine!